I think stimulus would be an added bonus. The market appropriately has said, look, we're going to get stimulus. We don't know if we'll get it before. This is before today's comments. We don't know if we'll get it before the election. Unlikely. That's what's been messaged. But we'll get it after the election either way. So they're willing to be patient. Part of that, of course, is because where else are you going to go? As we've talked about, if you're buying the 10-year, you're going to have to wait 10 years to get your full return capital back. In the meantime, the coupon is going to be losing money when it's inflation adjusted. So equities continue to be the place to be. Now, I think that you, Trump is rightly saying, hey, you know what? The Republicans can't be looked at as holding it up, and the Democrats want to go bigger. So we've got to meet that challenge and go ahead. So I continue to be optimistic about a stimulus plan. All we need, to your point, is the continued positive messaging to give the market that added push. Jenny, the, the Fed has already served up the Sunday, right? We all know that. Tastes pretty good, certainly. Uh, this is a big cherry on top for investors, right? If it came through in short order, it would be the big cherry. But but Steve made a really good point, which is that we don't need the stimulus as long as we need as much as we need the messaging that it's out there. I think right now, with respect to this tweet, who knows what way the wind was blowing when that came out? I don't have a lot of faith that that tweet means anything is going to happen faster or slower than it was before. I think what the market's pricing in is that between now. And next January, there will be a big stimulus package, and we will get that, and that's what matters. The precise timing doesn't matter as much. Yeah. Michael Farr, um, the fact of the matter is you have a broadening rally, right? Uh, this week, best since July, mm -hmm. and you have Russell 2000, best week since June, energy top performer this week, banks and regionals both coming off the sixth positive session in seven, best week since early June. That's a good sign for the overall market. We're not talking about tech every day anymore. Thank no, God. and I don't necessarily feel like it's a rotation out of tech either, Scott. I mean, I don't feel like this is necessarily happening at the expense of tech. We're getting a bid in some of these more cyclical areas. The value stocks that we've talked about <laughs> on Halftime Report for the past few months, we were maybe a month or so too early. I should, I'd always like to be a month or so too early with, some, with an idea. But it's beginning to catch the bid that the halftime report said it was going to catch. So congratulations, Scott. We're getting that. And it's broadening out, which I think is a very healthy sign. I think the implications are really kind of remarkable. I expected to see stocks this week really down. I mean, when we saw Vice President Biden jump ahead in the polls and the president in the hospital and sidelined from campaigning, I would have figured that Wall Street would have looked at Biden's tax package and said this is going to be a disaster, and I expected stocks to be down. Wall Street's saying it, they're not all that concerned about the Biden proposals here. In fact, shares are going up. With a broadening rally, I think it's very encouraging for investors.